Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Ray and I'm a second year Cambridge student studying physics. And um, before university, I decided to buy the Brilliant.org subscription so I could take some of the courses and see how they compare to the actual community aspect, which is free. If you're not too sure on the free key parts of Brilliant, you have the courses page, which you have to pay for, the daily problems page, which you can do the last 10 days for free if you don't have a subscription, and you have the practice page on which you have so many free problems written by the community. Basically, my conclusion is that the subscription isn't really worth it if you're a STEM student, and you can gain so much more by just doing the problems on the free community part of the website. Now, don't get me wrong, I think that Brilliant is a fantastic website and has some really interesting courses, but I think the subscription doesn't really justify the price, especially considering they basically force you to buy the annual subscription. Uh, just so you can uh, access all the courses rather than the monthly subscription because of the way they've priced it. I feel like if you buy the subscription, then you feel more obligated to be doing the courses, which are actually paying for, rather than the community practice problems, which are completely free and so much better to do. To see why this is the case, I think it's helpful to consider the target audience of Brilliant, which is just the average Joe who doesn't really have um, much pr mathematical problem solving skills, but is interested in topics like cryptocurrency or quantum computing or something, and just wants to casually learn this material. Whereas for a student in secondary school or sixth form, you don't really need to learn any of that material, and doing so won't make any better problem solving. Whereas for many of the other courses, say on logic, the problems are usually quite straightforward and they won't help you nearly as much as doing problems on say the community part of the website. Now don't get me wrong, I think that Brilliant is a fantastic website and it's so much better than these so-called brain training apps such as Elevator Peak and if you're interested in why they don't really work there's an article which I've linked down below. But it is worth bearing in mind that Brilliant wants to make more money and many of their courses aren't designed for say a STEM student really trying to push their problem solving abilities it's mainly for people who are sort of well within their career and they're sort of interested in improving a bit of their problem solving and want, want to do some quick problems on the way to work or something in that morning, rather than students who want to sit down and like grind free a lot of algebra to get problems done and actually really improve their uh, problem solving skills. So ultimately, while I think one or two courses such as a contest math course is quite good, I don't think it justifies the 100 or so dollars that you have to spend. And besides, for that, those sort of topics, you can probably find a book for much cheaper or just find resources for free online, especially when it comes to contest maths. So basically, my recommendation is that if you're a STEM student and you want to improve your problem solving skills, then you should pretty much only use a practice page, which is completely free to use. So I'll just quickly go over that now. So you can see it's been a while since I logged on Brilliant and here are all the daily problems, which uh, you can do for free every day, but you can't go back and through the archives for these problems. So basically the page I like the most is a practice page and then you should sort of choose what you want to be practicing. So if I go to algebra, then there's a lot of topics in algebra to practice all over here. And down here you also have a community wiki, uh, which is also really quite good, especially for some, I don't know, obscure ther theorems or just uh, like say this uh, proof which you commonly come across. Um, so if I go back to this page, then we have uh, expressions and variables. If I go to algebra warmups and press continue, then you can see uh, there are some pro problems over here and different levels of algebra warmups. So right now this is in level four and this is a community submitted problem. So if you've done uh, geometric sequences then this um, problem should be fairly straightforward because it's just an infinite sum. And if you re-express the right-hand side as a geometric, uh, infinite geometric sum, then you can rearrange and solve the equation. So let's say if I just press discuss solutions rather than actually trying it out, uh, you can see this is pretty much exactly what they've done over here. And these are some community solutions. Uh, so this person has quite a comprehensive community solution. There's a lot of discussion going on here, which you can learn from as well. Um, and then after, after you've done that, you can just press continue and go to the next problem. And also do that. Uh, I have no, I, I don't want to sit down and work through this, uh, probably some other time. Um, and then there are just a bunch of other like good stuff you can get started with. Um, and because each time you do this, there's a different set of problems as well. Uh, so if I were to go back to uh, one something I've done before, like algebra le uh, free level warm up, right? Then I could just press this redo button over here. Do you want to start over? And then it will just give you a new set of problems to be doing at that level. And you can just complete the same process for, I don't know, some more interesting stuff such as geometry and see a lot of stuff in here as well. And then, I don't know, do some interesting level five problems or 
if they do have level five problems. So now you can see they do advertise their courses at the top as well, uh, just to try and encourage you to do the course. Uh, so this like was one of the courses I was doing when I had this uh, subscription, just to see how uh, how the course was. But I think it's just so much better to actually be getting stuck in some of these problems and then just learning from other people's solutions for these problems or like some of the problems which have been written by the brilliant staff. So now something else I forgot to mention as well, if I go to back to algebra warmups, um, then you can see it has some concept quizzes as well, uh, which are mainly problems problems written by the brilliant staff, um, which sort of get you warmed up for doing some of these problems. So you work, first do the warmups and then you go to level one, two, three, all the way to level five and these should be some pretty difficult problems and there would be quite a lot of discussion surrounding it, I imagine. And you can even contribute your own problems or contribute to discussion overall by writing solutions to other people's problems, which is really quite good. So now when it comes to using Brilliant, I do have a few pieces of advice. Firstly, be consistent over a long period of time. It's so much better for you to do, say, three to five good problems a day, which push your abilities, rather than trying to do, say, 21 to 35 problems on, say, a Sunday. Being consistent and spending enough days in between thinking about the problems and thinking and reflecting on problems you've already done and problems say you couldn't get right and you had to look at the community solution for it is so much better. It's kind of like space repetition if you've already appreciated the um, benefits of that. Secondly, try to do problems outside your comfort zone. There's no point trying to do lots of really easy problems because you'll get nowhere and you won't practice anything doing that. And there's no point trying to do lots of really difficult problems. Uh, which are well outside your comfort zone because you won't really be learning anything. Uh, pick a problem which you feel like you can do and it just lies just outside your comfort zone and try to have a stab at that problem. And also think carefully about what you want to be improving on. While at the beginning you can probably do a bunch of different problems and not really think too much about which topics you're doing, I would suggest that as time goes on, try to identify your weak points and attempt problems in that. For example, if you're starting to do Olympiad problems or something, and you find the number theory questions to be particularly difficult, then you can go do some easier number theory problems on Brilliant, and then hopefully that should give you a sense of how to approach these problems, especially when reading other people's solutions, um, and if they come up with a method that you hadn't thought about. Uh, and gradually doing that should help improve your number theory skills, and then you can go back to doing some number theory Olympiad problems. So here I am on the number theory section, and if I scroll down then I can just see some stuff under modular arithmetic. So let's say I go over here, basic applications of modular arithmetic. You can see you have the concept quizzes again, Chinese remainder theorem, Fermat's little theorem, which there is a, a wiki page about on Brilliant as well. So you can read through the wiki, wiki page and then get an idea of what it's all about and then start doing the problems on it and see some of the explanations for the problems as well. And after that, you can do some like level four problems as well, first level two, then three, then four problems in number theory. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you found it useful and found out some of the ways you can be using Brilliant.org to improve your problem solving skills. Uh, but for now, I guess I'll see you next video. Bye.